This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how to create this vector flame icon using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So with that being said, I'll close out of this and get started. The first thing we'll do in Inkscape is set our view to custom, and then we'll zoom in at 100%. And then we'll open up our Align and Distribute uh, menu with this button right here. Make sure you have last selected chosen from this drop down, and then we'll come over to our uh, edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button right there. So, the first thing we're going to do in Inkscape is draw a square. So, come over to the Create Squares and Rectangles tool and click on that, and bring the cursor over to the canvas and hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly symmetric square. And what we'll do from there is convert that into a path by going to Path object to path. And then we'll come back to our select tool. And then we're going to click on this to get our rotation handles. And then hold control on the keyboard and grab one of these corner handles and just rotate this around so that it's going at a perfect 45 degree angle with the corners going perfectly up and down like that. And the next step is to come over to the edit paths by nodes tool and click on that. And you're going to see these four points appear on the shape. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring our cursor up here to the top left and we're going to click and drag over those center two nodes right there in the middle at those corners so we have them both selected. And we'll come up to this button up here that says make selected nodes auto smooth. Go ahead and click that and it's going to smooth those nodes out so they're not corners anymore. And then we'll come back to our select tool and we'll grab this arrow at the bottom and just bring this up to about here. So we get a shape sort of like this, almost like a like an eye or a leaf. And then we'll just take this shape and put this up into the left corner right here. And I'm actually going to hold Control and Shift and scale this down a little bit. And what we're going to do now is with this up here, we'll right click that and go to Duplicate. Well, not Duplicate, I'm sorry, Copy. We'll right click that and go to Copy so we have it copied to our clipboard. And what we're going to do now is go to our Freehand Pen. And from this drop down up here, make sure you have uh, From Clipboard selected, uh, selected. And for the mode, we want to use Create Spiral Path. And we want to set the smoothing so it's at about 48. And once you have that, those parameters set, what we're going to do is draw a line on the canvas. And I've drawn a line up here just to illustrate the shape that we're going to bring the cursor in. This line right here, when we're, when we're drawing this shape, we want to draw going in that going in that uh, pattern right there so that it dips down and then it dips up and then it comes back down to about an equal plane that the starting point was on. So and what it's going to do is it's going to take that shape that we copied to our clipboard and stretch it out so that it follows that path. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and just delete that on the and just delete that. And um, I'm going to go ahead and draw that shape. Maybe like that. And once you get that, if you don't quite get the shape that you like, if you end up with something like this, you could just press delete on the keyboard and that'll get rid of it. But I like how this came out right here, so I'm going to use that. And then I'm going to go to the select tool and I'm going to select this. And if you go to edit paths by nodes, you'll see this is not recognized as a path yet. This is a this is an object that's stretched out and going along that path, as you can see here. And I'll go back to the select tool. If I hold Control and Shift in this, on the keyboard and scale this down, it's going to make the line thicker. But if I scale it up, it's going to make it thinner. So what I'm going to do is I want this line to be a little thicker than how this is right now. So I'm going to hold Control and Shift and scale this down a little bit, maybe that much. Maybe I'll take that a little more. We want that to be a little thicker. That looks pretty good right there. So once you have it set in place how you like it, just right click it and go to duplicate and then hold control and click and drag this copy down here. And then I'm going to hold control and shift and I'm going to scale this one down a little more because we want this one to be a little thicker. And that's pretty good just how that is. And once our shapes are finalized, um, we're going to finalize it by going to path object to path. And if we go to the edit paths by nodes tool, we'll see it's no longer an object being stretched along a path. It's now an actual path with individual nodes like that. 
So once we've done that, I'll go back to the Select tool, and I'll click on this original shape that we drew, and go to Path, Object to Path. And then we can now take this little eye shape that we drew and press Delete on the keyboard. We're done with that. And I'm going to take this and move this out of the way. I'm going to come to this original shape right here, click on that, and I'll click that a second time to get our rotation handles. And I'm just going to rotate this around until it's about in an upright position that I like, maybe sort of like that. We'll take this one and do the same thing. Click it a second time to get the rotation handles. Scale it around so it's in an upright position. And then I'm going to flip that uh, horizontally, coming this button right here saying uh, flip selected objects horizontally. If you want a keyboard shortcut for that, you can just press H on the keyboard and that'll do that. And I'm going to bring this over here. And I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and click on the original shape. On the original shape and I'm going to select uh, align bottom edges so that they're both on the same horizontal plane down here. And then I'll click off of that to deselect. And then I'll hold uh, control on the keyboard and click and drag this off to the right until it's touching uh, until, until it's touching that shape right there. I'll bring that over maybe about that much. So you can see now we're starting to get uh, what appears to be the whimsical shape of a flame. And what I'll do now is I'll click on this original shape and right click that and go to duplicate. And I'm going to turn that red just so we can see it when compared to the other shapes. And I'll hold Control and Shift and scale this down, maybe about that much. And I'll put this one right about here, just so that, maybe up here, just so that the edge of it, let me bring the opacity down to show you, just so that the left edge of this is going over this little cross section between those two shapes. So once I get it about there, Maybe I'll put it right there. I don't want to put it too far out, otherwise this tip is going to stick out. So I want to put it right about there. And once we get that there, we can turn that black. And then as you can see, we pretty much have our flame shape. And what I like about this is that you get this little other shape of a flame within the negative space of this object. So what we could do now is we could um, click and drag over the whole thing and just color it in however we'd like. You can make it red. Or you can make it, um, you know, orange. Give it a gradient that you like. And if you want, you could unify the whole thing together. You go to Path, Union. And then if we go to Edit Paths by Nodes, uh, we now have a vector flame icon that acts as a path with individual nodes that we can edit further. So that's how you can create a flame icon using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, uh, just let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.